linear progressive history is not based on the movement of five races, but on the movement of ethnic families, newly formed families, tribes, newly formed tribes, and nations throughout the earth as a result of climactic changes, economic changes as in the collapse of trade routes, immigration, settlements, colonial expansions, war, forced relocations, and enslavements. The history of the descendants of the children of Israel included. Northern Kingdom of Israel, Indian of the Americas, Latinos and Hispanics. Universal Center for Renovation, where the Word is made flesh, presents historical and biblical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The Indians and Ethiopians of Ancient Syria, Palestine. The Kingdoms of Israel and Judah, Part 2. Read 1 Kings chapter 12 for the history of the division of the nation of Israel into two separate kingdoms. The northern kingdom of Israel was described as Indians by Greek and Roman writers, and the southern kingdom of Judah was said to be of Ethiopian origin by Greek and Roman poets. One of the greatest open secrets of history, and also well documented throughout the annals of Western and Eastern civilization, is the exile of the children of Israel out of their homeland, the land of Canaan, into all countries on the globe, including the Western Hemisphere, also known as the Americas. Greek and Roman writers called the northern tribes of Israel Indians. So when Christopher Columbus sought out the Indians of the West, or the West Indies, he was looking for the Indians of the Middle East who had migrated to the Western Hemisphere, the lost tribes of Israel. Today, their descendants are known as Indians, Latinos, and Hispanics. Many historians understood that the natives of the Americas were the biblical Israelites that they had heard about in many Sunday school sermons, including the Western frontier American explorers Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark Expedition, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. The Lewis and Clark Expedition, also known as the Corpse of Discovery Expedition, was the United States' expedition to cross the newly acquired western portion of the country after the Louisiana Purchase. Portraits of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. The Corps of Discovery was a specially established unit of the U.S. Army and civilian volunteers under the command of Captain Meriwether Lewis and his close friend, 2nd Lieutenant William Clark. Clark, along with 30 others, set out from Camp Dubois or Camp Wood, Illinois, on May 14, 1804, met Lewis and 10 other members of the group in St. Charles, Missouri, then went up the Missouri River. The expedition crossed the Continental Divide of the Americas near the Limhi Pass, eventually coming to the Columbia River and the Pacific Ocean in 1805. The return voyage began 
on March 23, 1806, at Fort Clasop, Oregon, ending six months later on September 23rd of that same year. President Thomas Jefferson commissioned the expedition shortly after the Louisiana Purchase of 1803 to explore and detail as much of the new territory as possible. Furthermore, he wished to find a practical travel route across the western half of the continent, directly avoiding the hot and desolate desert southwest, and to establish an American presence in the new lands before European powers attempted to establish claims of their own. The campaign's secondary objective were scientific, economical, and humanitarian, to document the West's biodiversity, typography, and geography, and to establish positive trade relations with potentially unknown Native American tribes. The expedition returned to St. Louis to report their findings to President Jefferson via maps, sketches, and various journals. Lewis and Clark meeting the Flatheads, the Flatheads Salas, Native Americans, in Ross Hall, September 4, 1805. One of the missions of the Lewis and Clark expedition was to positively identify the North American Indians as concerning their land of origin, their connection to the ancient land of Canaan or Israel-Palestine, and the belonging to the biblical tribes of Israel. As reported in and mentioned in the book Old Canaan in a New World, Native Americans and the Lost Tribes of Israel by author Elizabeth Fenton. In May of 1803, Dr. Benjamin Rush, acting as medical advisor for the Lewis and Clark expedition, produced a list of questions for Meriwether Lewis to consider when encountering Native American populations in the Western Territories. The list appears in Rush's commonplace book, as well as in a more extensive list of questions prepared by William Clark in 1804. It is divided into three categories, physical history and medicine, morals, and religion, and it evinces a wide-ranging proto-anthropological curiosity. Rush asks Lewis to record information about everything from illnesses to marital age to diet and the use of intoxicating substances among Native Americans. One of his most targeted questions, however, is reserved for religion. What affinity, Rush acts, exists between Native American religious ceremonies and those of the Jews? What affinity is there, Clark writes, between their religious ceremonies and those of the ancient Jews. Clark's addition of the word ancient is significant for two reasons. First, it suggests that he did not merely copy out Rush's questions, but revise them as he prepared his own guide for the expedition. Second, and more crucial for the purposes of this study, it reveals this question's investment in a long-standing discussion of the origins of the indigenous American peoples. Specifically, Russia's inquiry and Clark's revision demonstrate an interest in what I will refer to in this book as a Hebraic Indian theory. The notion 
that indigenous Americans might be, in part, or in whole, descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. When he asks Lewis to look for traces of Jewish practices across the American landscape, Rush does not have contemporary Judaism or actual Jewish people in mind. As Clark recognizes, Rush's inquiry reaches instead for evidence of a past, predating the development of the religion now called Judaism. Rush seeks the kingdom of Israel, which disappeared around 722 BCE, and which might, his question hopefully indicates, be on the verge of reappearance in the Americas. Left the lands ruled by the waning Neo-Assyrian Empire, and settled in the Americas around 722 BCE. Israelite conventions, habits, and customs during the 8th century BCE would not bear any similarity to the contemporary rites, customs, and habits of any Israelite or Jewish community, which have all developed throughout linear progressive history through thousands of years of political social, and economic history. Israelite habits, mores, and customs, which would have developed as a continuum of the 8th century BCE, more or less isolated from the developments in the Old World, would still show evidence of that continuum of development thousands of years later. This is what Rush understood. Lewis and Clark meeting the Flatheads, September 4th, 1805. This is a fresco from Dariuropas titled The Water Miracles in the Desert. A large menorah dominates the center of the painting. Below it is an oval structure from which or to which several gray strips lead. Beside the oval structure stands a large figure pointing at it with its two hands. And twelve small figures stand before houses arrayed in an inverted U shape. When the painting was uncovered, Various interpretations were suggested. Based on a comparison of the large figure dressed in the style of a Hellenist teacher and other paintings in the synagogue, the figure has been identified as Moses. The twelve small figures dressed as Persian princes were identified as the tribal chiefs. In other words, Two major cultural influences on Dariuropus are recognizable in these figures, Roman and Persians. What we have here, then, is a painting of the camps of Israel with a tabernacle located at the top of the inverted U. Once one discerns that Moses is holding a staff that he inserts into the round structure, it becomes clear that this is a painting of the miracle of the water described in Exodus 15, the sweetening of the bitter water, Mara. What is really astounding is if this fresco from this 2000 year old synagogue was realistically rendered by these ancient painters the tribal chiefs of Israel would have resembled what the Greek and Roman poets called Indians and Ethiopians. Or, in the language and cultural identifiers of today, Indians, Latinos, and Hispanics.
The history of the world is nothing if not the linear progressive history of the interactions of all the families, tribes, and nations of the earth. The history of what is termed Western civilization traces the path of the families and tribes of many nations, including the children of Israel, and their adventures in their exile and diaspora. And the same can be said about what is termed Eastern civilization. History is littered with clues and cookie crumbs on what exactly happened to all of the lost tribes of Israel if you know where and how to look. For instance, the geographical ideas of the three Indias not only helped Christopher Columbus name the West Indies, but also locate the lost tribes of Israel for European Jewry, who was looking for a safe haven because of the Spanish Inquisition. And what safer place than among their long-lost brethren? And also, for the European monarchs who sought the lost tribes so they could convert them to Christianity and then help the European armies in their struggles against the Muslim world in the Crusades. The three Indies. The first was located in Israel-Palestine. The second in the country in South Asia, India. And the third and final India the land where the missing lost tribes resides, the West Indies. Northern Kingdom of Israel, Indian of the Americas. So come and join us on this journey of mystery where not only the mysteries of the ages will be solved. Colossians 1 and 26. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but is now made manifest to his saints. But also, ultimately, the fate of the world and the destiny of man. Northern Kingdom of Israel, Indian of the Americas, and one of the greatest mysteries and keys to understand the world we live in today, our past and the picture of the future world to come, is to solve the riddle of how did the lost tribes of Israel come to inhabit a new world, the Western Hemisphere. More to come.